Uh, hi, and welcome to the first official episode of Drunkards and Dragons, our brand new fifth edition D&D comedy role-playing podcast. My name is Jackson Simiana, and I'm the author of the fantasy novel Starfall. I'm going to be the Dungeon Master during this season. And for anyone not familiar with D&D, the basic gist of it is that as DM, I'll be crafting the world our players are going to explore, each of whom is taking on a unique character. Uh, I'll be controlling the missions, the world building, the NPCs, while the others will be controlling everything about their characters. Most decisions and actions in the game are controlled by dice rolls, which we will be doing on an online app. For example, most dice rolls will be a D20, um, 20-sided dice. Low scores are a bad result and high scores are a good result. Um, If the player rolls a 1, it's a botch, meaning it's a total failure. If they roll a 20, it's a critical success. Um, If a character is asked to roll with advantage, it means they roll two dice and they pick the highest score. Same with disadvantage, except they take the lowest score. Um, Different decisions, stats, and encounters will affect dice rolls, which you'll see as coming up as we play. Um, So we all decided that we're going to be keeping this podcast more focused on the role play and the comedy aspects. Um, So you're going to see variations from the normal mechanics of the game so that we don't get bogged down with numbers and dice rolls and all that. Um, We'll be following basic logic for practically everything we do in the game just to keep it believable and fair. We'll be trying our best not to talk over each other as we've already established, Um, but there are five of us and we all live in different places, so you have to bear with us sometimes. Um, If you listen to our prologue episode, which is already up on Spotify and YouTube, you may already be familiar with some of our characters, but today we're actually doing the proper introduction since we didn't get to do it last time. Um, So we'll start with Fox. Do you want to introduce yourself and tell us about your character? Yeah, uh, I'm Fox, and my character is Harry Harden, uh, spelt Hardon, pronounced Harden. He is a hill dwarf monk uh, who uh, originates from an imperialistic island nation. He's widowed and also an orphan. Um, He lost his wife to the vicious vile and malicious race known as the pointy-eared bastards in his tongue, or elves. He's a ex-special force agent, uh, or at least he was, until he tripped over a stone on top of a mountain, sending an avalanche stampeding down the cliffside and crushing his entire team. Uh, After this disaster, he withdrew to the mountains and learned the ways of the monks. After many decades learning the arts of the monks, he decided to go wandering and ventured out into the wider world where he met uh, the current party. Cool. Yeah. Uh, Cameron, do you want to introduce yourself and tell us about your character? Oh boy. Okay. Oh boy. Um, <laughs> my name's Cameron. Um, I'm going to be playing the character Pinky in this podcast. Um, Pinky is a gnome rogue because uh, that made the most sense to me when I was drinking on my last Saturday night. Um, and uh, Pinky's story is mostly yet to be revealed at this moment, but. Uh, freshly after leaving his hometown of Leafy Wood, <clears throat> leaving uh, his hometown of Leafy Wood, um, he's he's kind of in a dep- he was in a depressive state um, until he just look just looking for his purpose in his life, kind of down a rough road and d- did a lot of drinking in the taverns, but eventually he found his purpose with this team with this team and this group of friends, and uh, we'll see how his story unfolds. Cool. Um, Declan, are you there? Cool. Declan, yeah, do you want to introduce I'm yourself here. and your character? Yeah, all right. Hello, hello. I'm Declan. I am playing a tiefling as well as a bard. My tiefling, Kiron, originates from the eastern provinces of where the, I suppose, dwarven sort of imperialist empire resides around. Um, my character was sort of a runaway in there pre-adolescence i suppose where i sort of joined up with a traveling troop or caravan that didn't sort of persecute based on race as it's quite a uh quite a dicey empire in terms of races so um yeah <laughs> yeah basically i was uh traveling with them and learning to play my viol and um just basically collecting stories until my adulthood where i sort of struck out on my own um as a bard and then eventually came across these guys at the tavern joining up with them and, and adventuring ever since cool and last player is Ben. Do you want to introduce yourself and your character? 
Yep. G'day, I am Ben. My character's name is Guy Al Lone Hunter Gatha Kanathai, or you can call me Lone Hunter. Um, I was born in the mountains of Ice Hill until I was captured and sold into slavery. I managed to escape and became a survivalist slash mercenary, working for the top dollar until I joined this gang and we've been venturing together. Cool. All right, so I will uh, I'll give everyone and the listeners a brief introduction into the world. Um, so we're kind of doing a mix of uh, like basic D and D stuff and also my own world building. So it's a bit of a mix of everything. Um, so this season is titled "The Fires of Rivendia," and it will be set across the grim, dark medieval kingdom of Rivendia, a place of political tension and racial inequality. Humans are the most prominent race in Rivendia, and as such, most other races are chastised and discriminated against. Some basic facts for you. Um, King Rutherford rules from the capital city of Celeste. The Taverian Empire control a large island in the Soundless Sea off the coast of Rivendia, and the emperor's name is Emperor Fasimus. Um, he and King Rutherford are famous rivals of one another, but are not officially at war despite hating each other. And some of our uh, party members are familiar with the Taverian Empire, as you will learn as we go along. Um, the other major city in Rivendia is called Celador, um, and it's actually uh, entirely elf-controlled. Um, it was taken by the elves during the last war that they had with the Rivendians, which was about a decade ago. All right, so I will set up the scene and we can start playing. All right. All right, let's go. So it's mid-morning on a cool autumn day. Our player characters are traveling on foot down a muddy road through the countryside in Rivendia. A storm that previous night leaves the trees and grass around you shimmering with droplets. The dirt road has condensed into a deep muddy mess of grime and filth. A thick layer of fog blankets the landscape and all around you sings the glum chorus of frogs and the chirping of crickets. The dawn sun gives off an eerie glow as it tries penetrating through the wall of fog around you with little success. With each breath, your characters take a puff of mist escapes their lips, but they continue to trudge on down the muddied road westward towards their destination, the town of Devil's Creek. Our group is tired, dirty, and wet, their clothes soiled and waterlogged, their stomachs grumbling and their legs are aching. A week in the wilds at the mercy of the elements will cause most to succumb to exhaustion, but they had little matter in the choice. During their last mission, the group lost not only their horses, but failed to rescue the kidnapped daughter of a well-paying baron. Baron Sigmund of Brightfall from a neighboring kingdom was desperate to have his daughter Ilsa returned, but the bandits who had taken her had defiled the girl in more ways than one and had no intention to return her without a fight. They laid a trap for our party and a, tra a trap that our party fell straight into. The ensuing fight resulted in our party members not only losing their steeds and much of their money and resources, but also losing their dear friend and group leader, Deramore. Demoralized and grief-ridden, our party were forced to return the body of the Baron's daughter, bury their leader and dear friend, Deramore, split his gold purse between them, and flee Brightfall for good, with the hope that on the road somewhere, they could find a chance at redemption. The experience had been one of great sorrow, and our party is more determined than ever to leave it all behind. With little food, gold, or resources left, Devil's Creek may be the first step on their road to recovery. All right, so you guys are walking down the road, and this is your opportunity for any um, bants or any discussion you guys want to have about what's coming up and what's happened. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well... Well, I I can I can honestly say that that Harry Harden is incredibly devastated over the loss of Deramore. He's 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 already lost a team before. He's just lost another friend, uh, the leader of his part, party, in fact. So he's uh, he's in dire need of a drink, and I believe <laughs> that he doesn't really care about supplies too much she's just aiming to get to the nearest pub nearest heaven <laughs> and devil's creek and just get pissed are you yeah. still carrying the uh are you still carrying the hound's body i'm still <laughs> carrying, I'm, I'm also oh carrying the dead dog that i picked up a few that, missions ago that's about a week old now so your bag's yeah. starting to stink a little bit yeah yeah well <laughs> I, i've i laid some out over overnight over a over a tree and been trying to turn it into jerky but it's oh, not nice. really working because the the uh the land is so moist and 
Yeah, it's, been a... it's, it's half covered in mud. It's only really good for feeding, feeding uh, the dogs. I, Harry, need to fucking throw out that bloody thing. It smells just about as bad as your grandmother. Hey, I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. All right, oh, so no. how, how okay. far away from the oh, town are we? I'm taking quite a long nap. <laughs> You're taking a nap? No, the dog. <laughs> Oh, the dog, right? <laughs> I thought you said you were taking that. Hey. <laughs> wakey, wakey! Roll for nap. <laughs> Roll for nap. All right, so how, how Hi, far Pinky, away? Hi, Pinky, look a wee bit tired. Do you need a bit of a piggyback there, mate? Lone hunter can give a piggyback. Piece. <laughs> right, so well, we know hunter... what fucking happened last time you gave him a goddamn piggyback, don't we now? You tripped that, over a fucking That was space. not my fault. <laughs> oh, fuck it. I think he wants a piece from Lone Hunter. I think it. I think it was your fault, Lone Hunter. It was not my fault. It was your fault. You fell it over a fucking staircase. Because I was carrying Pinky, the little fuckwit. I you're, reckon you're Pinky's a fucking, fucking bad luck charm here. Seven foot tall Goliath. I don't think a tiny little gnome is going to make that much of a difference. Please, let's not get into the specifics. <laughs> He's a bit simple-minded, isn't he? I am not simple-minded, you degenerate fuck. <laughs> I, yeah. start, I start just climbing up Lone Hunter anyway. Okay. <laughs> and I just kind of, I, I kind of wrap my tiny Roll arms DJ around his mouth. forehead, and I just yep. kind of put my, put my chin on his head, and I just kind of sit like there. A, like a child? I, yeah, I, like a child. I did. Are you comfortable, Pinky? Mm, you can use a few <laughs> pillows. <laughs> Any pillows around? Hmm? All right. So <laughs> as you continue through the, I, I do say the dead dog could probably serve as a good pillow. Okay. Oh, I want to <laughs> say you could use the dead dog. Please get that away from me. <laughs> I drape the dead dog over Lone Hunter's neck. No. <laughs> yeah. I want you to do that for. I was absolutely <laughs> joking, mate. I'm surprised you can reach that high. Oh, Hell yeah, it. that's true. <laughs> I threw it. You threw it, okay. As you continue <laughs> through the countryside, a sprawling woodland rises from out of the mist to the side of the road you travel on. Uh, enormous ashen and oak trees glisten with water drops and groan like old folk as they sway in the breeze. The canopy blocks the sun as you make your way through the patchy woods towards your destination. All the while, the three of you cannot help, cannot help reminiscing about Deramore. His wicked sense of humor, his sharp tongue, his insatiable thirst for ale, and his ability to lead you out of any situation, no matter how dire it was. It saddens you to know that there would be no other leader like him. The party will never be the same. All right. Can I get everyone to roll a perception check? All right. Oh, boy. Uh, which, run, which, run, which run's perception? Uh, just, passive uh, perception, right? Passive just perception a with a d20. Oh, oh, okay. And we're adding the 10 on top of it? No, so mm -hmm. your passive perception... Do you add the 10 on top of it? No, you roll a d20, yeah. and then you add whatever your passive perception modifier yeah, is. Who, 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 who just rolled a 17? Goddamn. I did. Ah, fuck. You got a 4, mate. not very perceptive, are you, Lone Hunter? Alright, so that was another thing that I forgot to mention in the beginning, but we'll, we'll try and, um, with the rolls that we do, we'll try and... Uh, you know, tell the audience of the good and bad ones we got. So, um, yeah. Harry rolled a seventeen, so that's a that's a pretty good roll for a perception check. Um, so Harry, um, where is it? Oh, okay. I must have gotten rid of this paragraph. So that's cool. Um, so I'm gonna have to do it on the spot then. <laughs> um, uh, as you're walking, yeah. Harry, you think you start to hear screaming from the woods to your left. Oh shit! All right, uh, lads. I know we don't have Dara more. We're all a bit morally lost, but I, I think we should go investigate these screams. I would like to chop off some heads. <laughs> all right, well, Lone Hunter. Lone Hunter. I, I do say we go, help, so go investigate the scream in the woods. See what I, that's I'm about. just. I'm just sitting on Lone Hunter's head, so I'm going wherever he's going. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's go. All right, I, so I, I'll charge off. You follow, you head off the road and follow the noise into the woods, leaping over fallen, rotten trunks, tree trunks, and through thick walls of bushes and overgrown weeds. The calls for help get louder and more desperate. Beneath the swaying sentinel trees, in, a, in amongst a patch of grass and shrubs, you hear the source of the screaming. It's a young man. 
His ankle has been snapped up by a bear trap hidden in the, ve- in the vegetation. His leg has been shredded by the mechanical teeth of the trap. Sweat pours down his teary face. Please, help me, the man begs. And I'll let you handle the situation. Can I kill this one? No, you can't just kill everyone you meet. We got to investigate Old Hunter, we can't let you slit their throat again, right? That didn't work out so well for us the last fucking Look, if, time. If we... I didn't slit their throat, I knocked them out. What are you guys talking about? Get me out of here! Look, if we don't like him, we can kill him after. Shut up. We, we're discussing here. We're discussing your fate, mate. My well, leg is trapped. Ever... There, there are wolves in these forests. Wolves? You need to get me out of here. I don't know why I have an All American right, does accent. Anybody have a set of tools to get him out of there? Please, if you do not be quiet, I will chop off your leg. Oh, all right, all right. I say we'll I get st- you out of the situation. <laughs> yeah, we'll get you out of it, right? Does anyone have any experience with animal traps, bear traps? Anyone at all? Anyone? Anyone yeah. seen one before? Anyone? No. Surely, all right. it's just surely we can off. just brute force it. I will brute force it, and if we can't do it, we'll just chop off his leg. Uh, my, my, uh, all right, okay. hang on. Before you do, in the distance, the menacing howls of ravenous wolves echo through the trees. First one, then another. They are not too far off now. Oh, oh they're fine. They're not. They're far away. You want me to try and release your foot <laughs> from the trap? Give it, you, give it a go. Brute force it. You need it. to get me out of here, please, please. Try brute force it. Okay. I, uh, and that's that's I doing like my d twenty plus four. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Hang on, I would like to roll to go hide up in the trees. Hide up in the trees. Yeah. I that. I would actually agree with that. <laughs> no, you you're supposed to set the guy free. Oh. Alright, so Macy, I need to get a good eye. He's eye. weak. He's the, the he a time. weak man. I do, my race does not care. It, it, just just fucking open the open the goddamn bear trap. Okay. Before you so, do. Hang on, De- Declan wants to go up in the trees first, so we'll let him do that. So can you oh, roll an, ag- uh, an athletic... No, uh, what do you, what's it called? A, uh, it's a 1d20 plus my acrobatics. Acrobatics, 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 acrobatics yeah. Alright. Oh, oh nice. 24! 24. Uh, so you scale right. that tree like a fucking spider, you're just up in the branches. Oh. I will try and I've got a good some. bird's eye view of anything in approaching now, lads. Okay. We will... Um, can Pinky... <laughs> Pinky, Pinky wants to leap off of Lone Hunter's head and into a nearby bush. Okay. <laughs> Acrobatics? Uh, yes. I do believe. Let me just check my sheet here. Yeah. Okay. I couldn't Lone Hunter just toss him up. Nice. Oh. All right, so, or just uh, Pinky, another 24. Pinky rolled another 24. So, yeah, you, you jump off gracefully from Lone Hunter's head and land in the bushes. Uh, are you, are you trying to hide, or are you just... Yes. Are you doing? Okay. Noticing, noticing that, uh, that... Oh my god, that's a... That's while, while you land nicely in the bushes, um, you don't do well at hiding. We'll just say that, like, the top of your head is just sticking out of the top of the bushes. <laughs> Alright, well, noticing that the other two are hiding, while Lone Hunter frees the man, I'm also going to try and leap behind a nearby fallen log. I do um, not want to t- uh, release this man. It's a 12. It's a 12. <laughs> Can I also climb up a tree? No, you can't do shit. You're, you're supposed to do the job. Oh. I'm easy. I only went up a fucking tree so I could see the approaching danger. I'm not trying to fucking hide. Okay, I will release the measly human from the trap. Alright, so Fox leaps behind a tree. Uh, he, he kind of more trips over it, I guess, but he does get, get behind it. Um, <laughs> and... Ben, I'll get you to roll a strength check to try and release the trap. Okay. Oh, nice. I rolled a 19. All right, so you, you know, put your hands in, in between the uh, the jaws of the trap and you're able to open it enough that, that the guy can pull his leg out and his leg is just fully shredded, like the, the skin is just hanging off and there's blood pumping out and everything. I told you we should have just dropped it off. <laughs> and um, so the guy is just like, crying and sweating but he's really thankful thank you thank you you saved my life but as he says that the howls get closer and closer am i able oh, just to throw the measly human to the wolves i mean lone hunter no we didn't go for that fucking effort for you to throw him his bit right, hey like... you're the one that jumped into a fucking tree that's not my fucking Hi, problem i'm getting a vantage point you big lump and goliath Look, we... We we got it. We got to get out of here, guys. I can't handle losing more teammates. I can't. I can't handle it. As Harry says this, three wolves pop out of the woods into the clearing where you are. Okay, ah. 
Can, can <laughs> I can I just throw the guy at them, please? And we can just um, walk away. Hang on. Ben. Why is that weak, so intense on killing he, this man? Why did he, he want to kill him? He is a simpler weakling. Oh my god. <laughs> Lone I Hunter, have... you have fucking issues, all right, mate. You, the Goliaths you have, believe you, have, you should you fight for problems, yourself. Mate. You've got problems. No. The Goliaths I... believes you should fight for yourself. Uh, what are you gonna do? <laughs> you gonna fight for yourself and just let let the wolves attack the the human first, or? Uh, I'll deliberate. I think we should roll for initiative. I think it's. Uh, we, we should, should just give me one sec so I can show you the positioning of what's going on. Oh, oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so the one, two, and three on the map are going to be the wolves. Declan is All in right. the tree over here. Um, so Lone Hunter is over I'm here. In the center. God ben, fucking damn it. And the dude who you don't know his name. Um, Fox will say you're over here. All right. In the tree. And <clears throat> um, Cameron, you're in a bush. We'll put you over here. <laughs> Alright. Oh, and God. can everyone please roll initiative? All right. We just roll a regular d20 for that. Uh, I got a 19. Plus, um, initiative dexterity. with your dexterity. Oh, with my dexterity. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. So Fox got a 19. Oh, Cameron, you got a you got a six. Oh, I got a oh. 22. Nice. All, All right. right. So let I me got just... a 19 as well. Oh, hang on. As per my... usual, Pinky's fucking useless. I need to do my rolls as well. I'm stuck in this bush. Let <laughs> me get out. Uh, you just fucking jumped in there, Pink. You didn't know what was in that goddamn bush. One, two, three. Oof. Okay. So, first is going to be Ben. Number two is going to be uh... <laughs> Me and Declan, 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 Declan are and yeah, you Me and Declan, we gotta re-roll. So I got nine. Okay. <sighs> Declan, can you oh, wait, it's a, just a D, just a normal D twenty? Yeah. Mm. Okay. Oh, so, wow. No. <laughs> it's a critical so fail. Ben, then Fox, then oh. Declan, then one wolf. Uh, then a wolf, wolf, and then another so wolf. And wolf. Oh no, no, two. then me, then another wolf. Yeah. So it's a wolf two, wolf three, Cameron, and wolf one. All right, so just for uh, for listeners, so they're in the clearing. Um, there's wolves coming at them from different directions, um, but we'll uh, we'll describe it as we go. Have surrounded me. All right, so Ben, you're going first. What do you want to do? Um, am I versing a wolf? Uh, you can if you want. Um, you can do whatever you like. You can do whatever you, you want. The, you can do the can can if you want. It's literally up to you. Uh, I the attack is one of the wolves. Which wolf would you like to attack? Which wolf? I will attack number one. Okay, are you going to draw your weapon and then attack, or are you attacking them with your fists? I will draw my weapon. I <laughs> okay. will draw my weapon and attack. Okay. Um, so, roll your d20 with your strength modifier and proficiency bonus. Strength. Strength modifier and proficiency bonus. Which one's my proficiency bonus? Hey, oh, it's plus two. Okay, so... Oh, fuck. oh fuck. Uh, that's that's a miss. So Lone Hunter rushes critical at one fail. of. Oh, it is a critical actually. Yeah. Critical failure. So um, yeah. Lone Hunter rushes uh... at the wolf really confidently with his axe out, but trips over a stone and face plants. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. All right, Fox. What do you want to do? I'm gonna charge at Wolf Number One with my okay. hand axe. So I'll uh, I'll roll my d20 with my modifiers. So. That's a 19. That's so. better. That's better. Save yeah. my ass, Fox. Save my ass. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, alright. So, uh, I'm gonna land my first attack with my simple hand axe. Yep. Uh, so, that's that's a critical failure. Um, okay. And then I'll follow it up with a one-arm strike for three damage. But... Oh. Uh, is, it a critical, is it a critical failure if it's a damage roll? Oh, I, I no. just... Oh, no, no, it's oh, not. It's just five. It's just no, one damage. Oh, uh, yeah, because it's a 1d6. Never mind. So it's five damage plus three, so eight damage in total. So eight damage on wolf 
Yeah. One. Yeah. So okay. I swipe at him with my hand axe, and then I fucking clobber him in the face with my fist. You you do some good you do some good damage on him. The wolf is really unhappy, but he's bleeding quite profusely. Yeah. Take that, bitch. All right, Declan, what do you want to do? I would like to attack wolf number three, the one closest to Pinky, because I've noticed Pinky is having a little bit of trouble extracting himself from the bush. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, there's so many swords. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, you, so um, I roll a one d twenty plus my. I'm gonna let fly an arrow with from my short yeah. bow. Okay, so that's it. That's so, your d twenty with a dexterity and proficiency. Okay, cool. All right, so lovely. I rolled a nineteen for that one. Yep, that's a hit. And so roll your damage, which is your damage dice and any modifier. And any. What would my modifier be for a short bow? Would it be based off my dex or proficiency? <clears throat> If you have a proficiency, it'll be your dex plus your proficiency, but only if you have a proficiency in it. Okay. Well, I have my dex is plus three, my proficiency for yeah, a bow so is it's, plus it's two. Yeah, so it's still plus five. plus five, yeah. Okay, cool. So it's your 1d6 plus five, yeah. All righty. So that's just a one because it was a fail. Was All right, it? So, oh, okay. yeah, you rolled a one plus five. Shit. So um, <laughs> you let an arrow loose it. Well, no, because it's a 1d6, not a, not a d20. So it's one plus five at six damage in total, right? Yeah, but it, it's still a one, isn't it? I don't think that applies. I don't think well, you're, the, you're the DM. Okay, you're the DM. You're, I don't yeah. fucking know. This is my first game. If you're, if you're rolling, if you're rolling damage, if you, yeah. it's still one damage plus whatever you got. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's, so it's only six. ever a critical miss or anything if it's if it's like a d twenty yeah. and it's okay. an action. Sweet. Okay, so cool. I did hit him six. So yeah, you hit him. Um, the we'll say the arrow goes straight into his shoulder, and the wolf kind of shudders and starts to shriek a little bit. Yeah, baby. All right, wolf two. And that'll show the bastards. Um, wolf two is gonna is gonna go for Ben, I guess. Sakes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ben's still on the ground, so yeah. Um, so great. surely the wolf gets an advantage on that. Um, actually, yeah, you did critically fail, didn't you? So critically I guess failed. Wolf is going to have an advantage there. What is my Wolf's plus one? Okay. I'm just kind of sitting over near my my Wolf, and I'm watching Pinky try to struggle Wait, to get out yo, of this fucking what, bush. What? <laughs> All right, so what's your armor class, Ben? Uh, it's 14. Okay, so that's a miss. So the Wolf jumps at you, but misses. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Wolf 3's turn. Wolf 3 is going to head straight for the guy in the bear trap. Oh, he's oh, just come out of the bear trap. No, that's, oh, that's right. That's We're not good. really too emotionally invested in him. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that's a miss. So, oh. Wolf 3 charges at the guy who's injured still on the ground, but misses as well. Maybe he slips in the blood a little bit. Alright, uh, Cameron, your turn. Okay. Um, well, I have options here. Uh, I'm thinking that instead, instead of just going at Wolf 3, trying to murder that guy, mm -hmm. I am going to conjure a uh, minor illusion of mm -hmm. a uh, of a roaring bear to try and scare the dog away from attacking him. Ooh. Nice, Sounds nice. Good. So... So I'm gonna do that, and and I'll just need to roll for, I guess, deception against a wolf. Hopefully, yeah. it doesn't have high <laughs> high intelligence. Yeah, um, but we'll see. Okay. Uh, no, it's got very low intelligence, actually. Nice. You should probably hit this. Ooh. Yeah, that's a, that's a hit. nice. Oh, thank you. Gorgeous love. Fourteen. Wh so. Which wolf were you doing this at? Number three, three the one that's currently on top All of right, the cool. dude. So you're able to conjure up a um, a uh, bear illusion, and the wolf, it's already been hit with an arrow. It's kind of injured and unsure. It actually circles back and runs back into the woods. Nice. Good. Nice one, Pinky. Nice. 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 You're thinking, thinking smart. <laughs> thinking All right. smart. Um, I'll wolf pop one. drink after this. Wolf One's turn. Uh, he sees Ben next to him, who's just taken a swing at him on the ground like a like a fool, and uh, oh, rushes <laughs> rushes at Lone Hunter. <laughs> All right. What's your armor class? Thirteen. Fourteen. 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 Okay, so that's that a hit. Hit. All right. So the wolf manages to jump on you, and I'll do a damage roll with advantage. Yes. Two D four plus two. 
All right, so six damage to Ben. Uh, fuck. So I'll write that down for you. No, I've got it on mine because it's got temporary got health points. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, what's your overall health? Thirteen. Okay, so we'll say the it's wolf jumps bad. on you and takes a nice chunk out of your thigh. Oh, fuck's sake. Okay. Right. Oh. Ben, it's your turn. I sl- I slam my axe down into the wolf's fucking head. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. So roll uh, your d20, d20 plus proficiency plus... and all that. Yeah. Mm. That's a hit. A hey, nice. And so roll a damage roll. So that was a seventeen. Um, I'm dual wielding, by the way. So I do a d6 as mm-hmm. my first one. And then I do another d6, but I add my strength to it of plus four. Okay. Well, the second one's a miss. Oh. So the so you hit with one axe. So do you want to roll a damage? Oh, the, it, it was he was rolling damage, and there's he was rolling damage. Oh, I yeah. see. Okay. Yeah. No. So well, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm dual wielding. Yeah. So which one's the damage? Uh, <laughs> the three. three and ten. Three and mm. ten. Three okay. The, yeah. Three for the first one, and then ten yeah. for the second. Because he follows right. up. Well, the the axe goes straight down into its skull and splits it in two. Oh, oh nice. and Wolf, Wolf one is effectively nice one, very Hunter. dead. <laughs> All right, nice one, nice one, Lone Hunter. <laughs> Just to make sure. <laughs> Box, your turn. So you're, right, okay. you're over by Wolf One now, so you're over yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I, I scream with rage and I charge at the second wolf with my, okay. with my fucking axe out again. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, so I'll roll for that. So, do I hit? Oh yeah, yeah, nice. Okay. That's a twenty-one. So, so yeah. you hit the hit the wolf, and how yeah. much damage do you do? So I swing at him with my axe, and I deal six damage, and then I follow it up again with an undercut for yep. three. For three. Uh, okay, so you you're able to stab and uppercut the wolf, and it's bleeding quite profusely. Its neck is opened up, but it's still alive. He's still but kicking, barely. guys. <laughs> Want to finish him off? Declan, your turn. Alrighty, I think just to finish off the wolf that, um, what's his face? Uh, Harry Hardon is going for. I'm going to notch yep. another arrow Harden. and let it fly. It's Harden. It's Harden. I'm sure it is, love. I'm sure it is. It's Harden. Um, it's Harden. All right, so I rolled a 25, so that's Ooh, a hit for that. That's a critical. Yeah, you rolled that's a critical hit. Right. Nice. And, oh, 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 and a 1d6 plus 5, and I rolled a nice. 6 for that. So the arrow, the arrow goes straight through the eye of the wolf and it drops dead. Oh, nice! Right, and did it. as nice. a and as a bonus action, I'd like to cast Healing Word on Lone Hunter just to yeah. reconstitute oh, that chunk out of his Jesus, eye. Jesus, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, um, if I want to heal him, do I need to do I need to roll a hit to uh, heal him with the spell, yeah, or is need, it just assumed I'll heal him? You need to roll. You need to roll how much you heal for. All right, it's a one d four plus my spell casting, which yep. is one d four plus this guy. All right, see, and I rolled a and nine I'm, on that I'm one. More than yeah. the I, I've got full health. Thank so, you. Nice. Thank you so fucking much. Lone Hunter, you're actually... <laughs> no problem, Lone Hunter, any fucking time. Lone Hunter, you're actually feeling more refreshed than when the fight started, despite <laughs> the fact that your thigh was torn into. <laughs> yeah, it got a little bit bigger and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah dick, just your, your dick muscles are bulging. Oh, 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 I do love a big guy. Your are just I really do. glistening in the light. Nice. Okay, oh, so... I'm going to um, that live one day. <laughs> so that fight encounter is over. Um, so the um the guy who you rescued from the bear trap is like still cowering and shaking, but he's alive and and he's well. A, and he says, "Thank you, thank you so much. Oh, you saved my life. Um, let me let me escort you to let me let me escort you to my to my home, my hometown. I can I, I can give you guys free food, free food. You saved my life. Is there free drink involved? Uh." I can I can talk to my boss. Uh, I'm sure I can make it happen. Yeah. Follow right. me, please. Right. Uh, does well, anybody Does anybody have them. something I can uh, close this wound up with? I've got uh, <coughs> I've got animal pelt oh. from a dead dog. Oh. Uh, and the guy just like kind of like looks at you, just hold out <laughs> the the dog's corpse. He kind of looks at it and <laughs> recoils. Flies. Harry, around, wouldn't it be smarter to use it? one of the freshly killed dogs? Uh, all right. So I drop the dead dog's corpse from a week ago and pick up one of the new ones. 
These are wolves, by the way. Oh, they're they're like the size Ooh. you are. Yeah. Uh, never mind. That's I keep it. my dead dog on me. Who knows the wolves are actually bigger. It. Who knows when I need it? I do yeah, believe yeah. none of us actually carry any medical supplies. That's I don't have any it. medical supplies. Sorry, mate. I've uh, a piece of your shirt will do just fine. I'm not giving you my shirt. A piece you know of what? your shirt. I, I'm not giving you, you know a piece of my shirt. I do what? have a you, chef's hat that we you're could use with me, huh? up, actually. You're going to use the chef's hat on this mere peasant. You uh, are yes, going to use the chef's hat because it costs me not to... nothing. <laughs> you're trying to make a move on me, peasant. Huh? You can't, can't replace on. my wife. Shut the fuck up, okay? You can't replace I'm my wife. I'm trying to this goddamn leg wound with a chef's hat. That pink is stole. In order, in order to make sure we don't have to use any of our resources, I shall carry this mere peasant to his hometown where oh, he can be restored health. Oh, thank you. Thank you for your kindness. You, uh, what what is right. your name, sir? No, he, like, he extends, a, he extends a hand to you. What? He extends None of a his hand. Fucking business. And then I grab oh. his hand and like carry him over my shoulder. Okay. Uh, how does Pinky feel All about right. that? hope this fucker bleeds out. That's my seat. <laughs> there is enough room for the both of you, Pinky. Probably oh. not. Oh, good! I, I climb, I I climb oh, up the injured guy. This shit. I climb, up, injured guy. <laughs> this shit. <laughs> I climb right. up the injured guy's injured leg. Alright, mate. Point us in the direction of town. Alright, and he points you down the way that you were originally heading. So you're back on the path and you're, you're heading back to... Um, uh, to Devil's Creek. Say, um, buddy, what's 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 your name? Uh, my name's Bowden. What's your name, good sir? Bowden. My name's Harry. Harry Harden. Uh, Harry. Harry Hardon. Harden. It's pronounced hard. How 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 the fuck aren't you cunts getting this? Oh, it's so, Harden. Oh, so sorry. So sorry. Anyways, what was your name again? Bowden. B o d e n. Bowden. Bowden. All right, uh, Bowden. Curiously, anywhere Bowden, to get, what the fuck are you doing in the middle of a wolf-infested forest? One at a time, guys. Oh, God. Go, Declan. <laughs> Go, Declan. No, no, after you, hard on. I was just asking if there was anywhere to get a good tank of the veil nearby. Oh, I actually well, work I at was... the local inn. <laughs> oh. Well, good fortune. <laughs> what were you saying, Declan? I was a little bit suspicious of why he was in the middle of a fucking wolf-infested wood. Oh, well, Caught you see, in a goddamn bear trap. I'm I'm the chef at our local inn, the the slaughtered the slaughtered swine inn, and uh, my my boss has me go out hunting each day for for different uh, game to serve at night. You see, I, slaughtered uh, swine. The, slaught, the slaughtered That's swine your... inn. Yes, the uh, the 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 best tavern in in all of Devil's Creek. Do you Your serve boss long for you. What? It's one at a time, Fox. What? <laughs> Just asked him whether he served long pork or not. Uh, I can make it happen, yes. Oh, nice. What did you say, Declan? <laughs> no, no, continue, it's fine. Pinky uh, has been to many taverns. Pinky will deduce if this one is the best. Oh, I, I assure you it is the best. And he looks, at, he looks at you kind of really strangely, at like kind of what sort of creature you are. He's never kind of seen something like you before. What the fuck are you looking at? Oh, sorry, sorry. I've just... Uh, you. I can't help but notice that you're all... Non-human. Yes, we are all. We don't use that word. You know, here. you know that's that's pretty insulting. That's oh. pretty insulting. You know, humans are only one step away from those filthy elf mongrels. You know, you, you guys have rounded ears. Elves have pointed ears. You're only one step away. Technically, humans are the ones we should be wary of. I, I well, just yeah. say, Lord, Hunter, just, don't start with this shit it. again, alright? Just say that. Man, we don't elves, fucking need it. Filthy elves. <laughs> oh, I, I, did, I didn't mean to offend. I, I'm just curious as all. We don't see your kind around here very much. Pinky could cut off your legs and then you will look like Pinky. Oh, please don't. <laughs> and he, 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 like, he like backs away from you. <laughs> alright. Um... Is there anything else we want to discuss or do before we get to Devil's Creek? Oh, shut the shut the fuck up! Shut the fuck up! <clears throat> if the ale is not fine, I shall slaughter the inn's master. Uh, you'll be putting up a good uh, fight. She's a she's a rather rowdy woman. She, she, don't my worry, master. We, we won't let Lone Hunter do it. Okay, <laughs> L Lady Vera is a uh, well. She's she's not the most pleasant woman, but. Well, she serves good ale, don't you worry. 
Is she good and okay, bad? Like, she said going to the oh fucking woods where there are a lot of wolves. She, she's she's not the, not the not the most caring boss, but damn, she makes good ale. Naturally, I'm sold. That's all, all I need to hear. That's all I need to hear. Inky is ready to go. Okay, let us go. The party enters Devil's Creek, a relatively quiet village of wattle and daub houses and wooden cottages haphazardly scattered across rolling grassy hills and down into a natural ravine, broken up by vegetable gardens, fenced off pastures and muddy tracks. The population appears to be no more than several hundred in total. A creek runs through town with uneven piers and rickety bridges built like fingers across the water. The foul smell of decaying fish and other seafood permeates through the thick, earthy air. Rats the size of small cats scamper along through the filth along the sides of the streets. The impoverished peasants of Devil's Creek are wary of the three strangers entering their village. Suspicious, sunken eyes watch your every move. Children wash in the cold, murky waters of the creek, and tanners just upriver dump their foul-smelling chemicals into the, into the very same water. Do you guys want to uh, say or do anything before we... What looks a like, fucking shithole. Looks like a pleasant place. Well, <sighs> the, our, our kingdom, Revendia, is, is not known for its opulence, that's for sure. Yeah, you were giving us shit for not being humans. Look at what being human gets I was gets about you. to fucking say, this place, just serves, say, this place suits Harry Hardon just perfectly. Oh, it doesn't suit me for shit. Back in the Empire, we live in opulence. I had a palace before I lost my team. And Bowden raises an I'm eyebrow. Sure uh, what, what empire is that? Ah, uh, oh. Nothing, nothing. No, I'm I'm not from an empire. Just uh, oh. forget I said anything. Sorry. I must have misheard you. Sorry, good sir. Yeah, I I meant uh, an open fire. I had a campfire back home. It was nice. Oh, was, it sounds lovely. Was, yeah. Yeah, Bo Bowden scratches his head. <laughs> looks away awkwardly. Yeah, Harry just kind of looks <laughs> looks up in the sky mm -hmm. and starts whistling. <laughs> oh, for... This is a damn sight better than Leafywood. Leafywood doesn't have a tavern. We're all oh. fucking sober and Leafywood bunch of pussies. Speaking of the tavern, where is it? Yeah, right, so, where is it? Um, as you, uh, you, as you like, kind of make your way into the very start of this, where the town begins. Um, there's a signpost um, with several signs pointing in different directions. Um, one sign says the slaughtered swine in. Another points to the guild hall, and another sign has no words, only a strange symbol. And a pointing arrow on it. Ooh. And uh, um, Bowden points down where the sign says to the slaughtered swine in, which is just down the road. Right. Um, I have well. a question for the mere peasant on my shoulder. Yes, good sir. Will you clean my clothes since it's covered in your filthy blood? Uh, <laughs> he looks down and realizes that your clothes are more or less your own blood and wolf's blood. <laughs> looks back at you and then nods furiously. Yes, of course, sir. Anything you want. You saved my life. I am more than happy to help you how I can. Uh, I'd um, I'd I'd like to roll like an uh, investigation check on that sign with the with the strange symbol. Yep. Yeah. So, so that would be. Uh, I guess um, an investigation check. Or... Yeah, it would probably be investigation. It's the Either that or his. I'm, I'll roll an investigation. Um, so that's a one d twenty plus. I've got three investigations. So. Yep. Nineteen. Nice. So, um, f uh, Harry, you immediately recognise the symbol as being um, a symbol of a flaming sword, which is uh, generally given to the Church of Tempest, which is the true neutral god of war. Oh, that's interesting. That's uh, that's very interesting. <sighs> Fucking religious zealots. <laughs> <laughs> um, before we continue, um, so the weather starts to take a turn for the worse as storm clouds roll in and the rain begins to pour down. Uh, All right, let's hurry. It begins as a soft drizzle and quickly escalates into a downpour. The sticky mud beneath your shoes makes it difficult to walk. Townspeople all around you run for their homes or any shelter they can find to escape the rain. Thunder begins to crack off in the distance. All right, let's, uh, let's make a move. Let's run towards the tavern, yeah? Do you guys Just agree? Get us a barrel of ale. L literally, all all yes. I'm thinking, all I'm thinking about is a nice tank of ale. Just a, considering just we've been on our feet the last few barrel. few days, this is we need some yeah. good broth. We need you've some been, good broth. You've been traveling hard for a week, so you guys mm. will probably be really looking forward to a nice, you know, cover yeah. over your heads. All right. Um. So as you begin to make your way through the town, um. 
a wide-shouldered town guard steps in your path. His face is hidden behind a visored helmet. His steamy breath puffs through the slits in his visor with each exhale. Halt, he orders. Who are you, Lot? We come into town saving this man who was almost killed by wolves. Weary travellers, sir. Weary travellers. We're uh, just passing through. Um, uh... Sorry. Yeah, well, I was just going to back up Lone Hunter, say, you know, we've rescued this fool, and we're <laughs> taking them back to the slaughtered, was it slaughtered swine inn? Yep. Um, so Bowden hops down off of your shoulders and extends a hand out to the town guard, and he says, Randall, it's me, it's Bowden. And Randall immediately recognizes him, and uh, Bowden explains what happens, and uh, Randall kind of looks at you guys up and down. What business do you have here in Devil's Creek? Drinking. A point. And drinking. <laughs> this is Drunkards and Dragons, like, if we're going to yeah. be honest. <laughs> look, look, we, look we've, lost our, we've lost our team leader. We've just been in another fight. Uh, we we could have died. Um, I can't handle this without a nice tankard of ale. So, I, are I you saying drink. that? Is that your a, character? Yeah, yeah. I got believe, a even got I a am drink. agreeing with the measly dwarf. I do agree, which we should have a night to ourselves. The, uh, the I did guardsmen, we are just passing through, we mean no trouble, we've been on our feet and weary for the past few days, we're just looking to get to the inn for a good night of rest. Last yeah, thing drink. we need around here is any more trouble, especially from a bunch of non-humans. Why, mate? What the fuck did you say? The only trouble that will happen is the, the trouble you cause. And we Ooh. shall sort it. Boy, boys, boys, yeah. back on down, back on down. Yeah. Red, 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 Red. I'd like to, I'd like to run a persuasion check to convince him that we're of no trouble. Yep. Oh. So how do I? I do a one d twenty plus my persuasion. Persuasion. Cool. persuasion okay. Yeah. Yeah. Depends if you. Nice. All right. Nice. So Just a roll of seventeen. A seventeen. Um. So initially, Randall, the town guard, t- takes a step forward as if to like in a confronting way and Declan you're able to pers- do you want to say anything else to persuade him or just what you said no nah, I'm good <laughs> okay so Declan's able to persuade him down and Randall kind of nods and he says well <laughs> what's the problem officer <laughs> my my name is Randall Fern I'm the captain of the town guard here I'm responsible for keeping the peace in Devil's Creek and he kind of looks at you all one by one looking you up and down and he nods be on your way then, and stay out of trouble. You hear? All right. Hi, mm, sir. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Whatever you feel, human. Uh, uh, pinky on pink, the head. Pink, oh, pinky <laughs> chimes in. Touch, <laughs> touch my friend again, pink and your head very... will be off your shoulders. <laughs> pink, pink is very tired. Pinky thinks this town is a, is a sight for sore eyes, <laughs> even uh, if it looks the opposite of not shit. Take that as you will, and I run off. Randall kind of like looks back at Pinky. He's like, "Oh <laughs> shit! I thought that was a child." <laughs> <laughs> I I sometimes do believe that's a child as well. He right. surely does act like that. Pinky's, pan- of the Pinky's time. pants fall down as he's walking, and he struggles to pull them back up. And he <laughs> tightens his man belt and keeps walking. Nice. His man belt. I don't know if I call man, man belt. belt but... Yeah, right. Well, Harry charges after Pinky. He's just as keen for a drink. <sighs> okay. I pick up the measly civilian and carry him towards the inn. Cool. All right. The party follows the sign through town to the slaughtered swine inn. The inn is a multi-leveled wooden building with pitched thatch roofing and chimneys poking out from the top. Wooden beams support the structure. Supporting the structure are warped and bent after years of wind and rain damage. The place smells of moist, rotten horse shit even before entering. A hanging iron sign juts out from above the door frame, swinging in the growing winds from the storm. The sign depicts an angry hog farmer slicing a fat pig's throat as it screams. The metal snapshot of its desperate face is rather disturbing. Uh, Are you going in? Yeah. 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 That's where the free food is. (laughs) Uh, You entered the establishment and are greeted with a heavy cloud of tobacco and cooking smoke that reeks of sweat, stale beer, and other foul odors. Uh, An open fire pit sits in the center of the large room. Patrons gather around it with their bare calloused hands extended to try and fight off the insidious cold of the rains and the wind. A short drunken man 
uh, doubles over from his seat and releases the contents of his stomach across the floor. His friends laugh as he vomits, clinking the tankards together. Well done, Walnut. Another record broken. As his friends cheer, Walnut throws up again, wiping his mouth with his sleeve and returning to the rest of his drink as if nothing happened. Um, a hook-nosed barmaid in a stained apron wipes down used tankards over by the bar and eyes you suspiciously. Um, Bowden walks up to her, greets her, and then uh, gestures for you guys to come over to meet her. Do, do you want to do that? I'm yeah, going, yeah. Yeah. I am going to look, bid this No, I turned around and leave. <laughs> it looks okay. like a pleasant place, I'm not going to lie. kind of <laughs> reminds me of home, good old War Barracks Tavern. So, um, there are certainly worse places to sleep. Yeah. Bowden uh, introduces you all. Uh, he says, uh, th "These are these are my rescuers. Uh, they, they saved my life. I was I was trapped." And he shows his his wound to the to the barmaid, and she kind of just her face remains just purely neutral the, the whole time that he explains the awful predicament that he was in. She looks at you all and says, "What are ye folk doing around these parts?" We uh, are oh, take this one. <laughs> we are usually we are. Travelers desperate for a pint of ale. He raises an eyebrow and nods. Uh, we were we were promised free food, free and, food, uh, and free food and free beer. So I I'm just gonna say we're gonna have trouble if you don't pay up. Free food, free beer. She looks over at Bowden. Bowden kind of like cowers like a child. She puts I'll eat Bowden if you can't feed us. Uh, good, good barkeep. I do believe, even if uh, he promised it for free, perhaps you can just take it out of his wages for not bringing you the food he would have promised for his hunting trip. You were the ones who saved my cook, were you? Yeah, indeed we were. A pained smile that wrinkles across her cheeks spreads out across her face and accentuates her crow's feet. Oh. She she nods. Mm. All right, free food, free drink, but only for tonight. Uh, what about uh, what about accommodation? What are your prices? We're uh, we're weary travelers. See, we we kind of need some rooms for the night. I have rooms. For, I I have rooms for rent for the night, if you please. Two silver pieces a night. I haven't no feather pillows or cushion mattresses to offer, but you get four walls, a chamber pot, and a locked door. What I do believe two it? silver pieces sounds like a bit of a steep. For are you sure it can't haggle it down a bit further? Especially not for this rat's hole. She she puts her she puts her um hands on her waist again and just stares at you. Look, Doesn't don't worry. Well. Don't worry. Look, I haven't been able to sleep lately. I've I've been suffering from a little bit of insomnia due to the uh the events of the past <clears throat> couple of decades, to be completely honest. So I just need a one meter squared bit of land that I can stand in and think about life. That I can give you for two oh, silver sick. pieces. Two silver pieces? Fucking hell. No, I'd oh. like to I'd like to persuade her to bring down the price, considering we've got two midgets, someone over five seven and someone else over six foot, and she's proposing putting us in a fucking room with one bed. That ain't gonna fly, bitch. I take offense are to you... the whole midget <laughs> shit. Are you <laughs> are you rolling for that or are you just gonna yell at her? I'm gonna roll. <laughs> okay. Seventeen. Seventeen. Um. She, okay. Uh, the woman says, "How about this? Two silver pieces, and I'll give you breakfast as well." All right. Well, I, I reckon we take, take that. I reckon we take that. <laughs> she yeah. sends a hand. You got yourself a deal. Nice. Do we do we have money? No, not really. But we'll shake it anyways. I mean, I mean, what little what little money we did get off of Daramore is um yeah, very scarce. It's probably, probably. I will not yeah. need the accommodation if I am not bitted must... with the in woman. I shall sleep outside. Oh my god! <laughs> I'd I'd love to watch you try to seduce this in woman. She you know, really yes, seems. I would love to see I, that. She role. doesn't seem like the most you know friendly sort. Have you ever seen a Goliath woman? This is like a living out of ten. <laughs> oh Alright, well, you know. Yeah, shit All right, for you. Are you I'm gonna, gonna, request... you gonna try flirt with her, Lone Hunter? I'm gonna, I'm gonna reach up above my head and shake her hand and then request a tank of the beer. Alright. Um, 
Uh, she says, uh, are, are you going to pay before I give you the room? No. You can have half yeah. now and half in the morning. Who's yeah, got half, the money? Fucking pay half this now, bitch. Half in the morning. All right. Oh, look, I'll, I'll pay her one silver coin now, and uh, Declan can pay her the other in the morning. Sure. We'll do that then. Is that how it works? I don't know. She should uh, better take it. She, she's more trusting of you because you did save her cook. So Yeah, there we go. Uh, she, look, look at this. Yeah. It's Harry's good um, looks, I'm telling you, his luscious beard, she, his she bald kind of, head. <laughs> she leans yeah. over the bar to you as if to like not raise her voice, and she says, um, just be warned, this ain't no place for travel. Most people around here don't take too kindly to strangers, least of all non-human strangers. You best be careful around here, I tell you. They and should she kind be of, worried about us. She raises Look, an you eyebrow. Say, you say the worst kind of shit, Lone Hunter. You say the worst fucking shit. You ain't from that elven city cellar door, are you? Elves? Elves? Do we look like fucking elves? Do we look like those pointy-eared bastards to you? No, I don't think so. Lone Hunter, Lone Hunter, chill, uh, look, chill. Look, I, I, calm. I, and Lone calm, Hunter, calm I'm not fucking Lone Hunter, I'm Harry Harden, and I hate elves. Oh, wait, sorry, I forgot Hard on. <laughs> I hate ha- Harden! It's fucking Harden! Oh. It's not hard on, it's Harden! I thought it was uh, Harry Hardon, you need to calm, or I'll get I'll get Lone Hunter to pick you up until fucking, you stop having a tantrum. An elf, some fucking. <laughs> All right, so um, the barmaid, uh, the the owner, hands uh, an old rusted key to you. Second room to your right, up the stairs. Just mind the rat droppings on your way up. Filthy buggers have been a blight upon this establishment for near a month now. Can't seem to get rid of the bastards. And the uh, oh, the lovely. beer, the beer, the beer will be ready for when you come back down. May I have a barrel? A barrel? <laughs> you fucking hell. God. Non Hunter, barrels aren't cheap to come by. You can't just ask the innkeep for one. Just ask for a free barrel. You're willing yeah. to pay? I'll give it to you. How much? I don't know how much a barrel is. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, five silver pieces. I, I, I suggest an alternative. Oh no. Oh, oh no. God. We all just kind of shake our heads watching this interaction. It's like, oh, we all know fuck. what's happening. We all know what's happening. I lop off your head, drink your ale, bring no! your body. No, to your you room. can't lop off a head. You can't just threaten to kill anyone. Look, sorry, miss. We'll be back in like five minutes to drink some ale. If you can just have some tankards ready, we'll take it. Right, honestly. The, the, the lady smirks and turns around to get the food and drink ready. <laughs> right, no, so, Hunter, we're gonna need to sit you down and discipline you at some time. Yeah, yeah so we're, we're gonna have to explain to you the uh, the intricacies mm, of, of make me bitch. Oh, fucking hell! Oh, we All fucking right, will. So, Best I you assume... believe it. We'll set Pinky I... on you. <laughs> Pinky wanted to say something. Pinky excitedly. Skipped off to the room. Okay. Yeah, I was, I, was, I was gonna say, uh, do we all go and check out the uh, check out our bedroom before we go back down for a meal and some drink? Where are you going? I mean, yeah, you're carrying backpacks and stuff. So yeah, we're gonna go put our stuff. I gotta put my barrel down. All right. So, um, <sighs> before you do, Bowden just like goes across and handshakes all of you, and then goes into the back room to start cooking. Um, nice. you so you go up the cramped corridor of stairs before. Oh, okay, you go up a cramped corridor of stairs before the second floor balcony opens up before you, overlooking the ground floor, and you find your way over to your room. And you open the door, and it's pretty much what you expect. It's pretty small. It's it's all wooden. It's damp. It smells. The the bed isn't clean. There's a chamber pot that's kind of half cleaned out. Yeah. Nice. Well, I'm just like home. I'm I'm just gonna put my barrel in the corner. I can sleep in there. I shall sleep on the roof of the inn. But to be honest with you guys, I I haven't been sleeping well lately. I uh I've been kept up by dreams of Dermor dying. It just reminds me of of the tragic accident that killed my whole team. Hard on. Seventy years ago. Yeah. Hard on. No yeah. one fucking cares. Oh wow. Well, Back up. Lone we'll Hunter. See. Lone Hunter. You need more of a practice tongue, honestly. Uh, practice tongue. Yeah. No, no, uh, no. You know what? Oh, get the fuck out you know what? Just get, get back you know downstairs. What? Get back downstairs. Just go. Harry Harden, Just leave. We've look. We've all we've all had a very tough time of it these last few days, and it can only get better from here. 
I know it's Look, uh, bringing up some shite from the past, but you'll Look, be fine I, with me. I know, you, I know you all blame me for Derek Moore's death. It's fine. It's it's understandable. I blame myself. I really do. No, no, it wasn't you. Derek Moore was, had was too me. much hubris was for me. his own good. No, it was me. I'm telling you. I'm. I, it would have been another pebble. I'm. T- fuck. <laughs> I can't. I can't handle Pinky, it. Pinky. Pinky puts his tiny hand on on Harry's shoulder. Oh. And he, and he oh. Says, you know what? You know what, Harry? Uh, Why? After after you lose so many people, you it it just becomes it doesn't matter anymore. Oh! And then he just walks off. Oh! <laughs> and then give him a, a little kick on, on the cheek. Oh! Uh, there's a there's uh, a knock on the door. All right. Yeah. Pinky, open the door. P- Pinky can't reach the handle. <laughs> Pinky, jump. Open the door. Oh, Lone Hunter helps Pinky open the door. Okay. <laughs> Roll an acrobatics check to open the door. No, I'll let you do that. It's fine. <laughs> um, um, Bowden's at the door and he, and he says, uh, Dinner's downstairs for you. I've reserved you a table. Oh, lovely. All right. Let's all go downstairs. Let's partake of the food Pinky and the beer. He moans in a sensual manner and then runs down the stairs. <laughs> oh, <for> <laughs> Any particular no. reason why, Cameron? Uh, it's just so excited. Okay. And ha- halfway excited down, for, he kind I think of, he's excited for food. Halfway down, he kind of trips over and turns into like a little snowball effect. <laughs> just, <laughs> down down the stairs. But then uh, I got he gets the bottom, he gets up like nothing happened. Look, I gotta ask a, a question real quick. Does Pinky have a gnome hat? Does he have like one of those big red pointy hats? No. Uh, Pinky. Uh. Pinky wears a beanie, and half his face is disguised. I think by, he's got an afro, doesn't he? By a scruffy beard, yeah. Yeah. So the beanie, the beanie's kind of—it's a big beanie, but you can see that he's got a uh, curly, a curly afro, not quite too puffy, but he's got a lot of substance under that beanie. Lovely. That's pretty, maybe uh... you can get him a little gnome hat one time. Yeah. <laughs> That's the dream. All right, so we all we all go. Yeah, Harry Harry moves on down the staircase too, following Pinky. Yeah, yeah, follow he purpo- he purposefully steps over the step that Pinky tripped on, just in case, okay. and follows him down to the table. Right, Lone so Hunter you... just normally yeah. walks down the stairs. He does not give a fuck about if it falls. I'm surprised over. he can fit in the stairwell. I fucking hate this guy. <laughs> it's a pretty <sighs> cramped stairwell, so he, maybe he has to like walk kind of on his side. Yes, the kind of so yes, yeah. so guys shuffle down the stairs. I, I shuffle down the stairs. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So um, as you guys sit down at the table, you notice that um, a lot of the patrons are still kind of staring at you and you know whispering to each other. They're like, no one in this town really seems to know what to make of a bunch of like different racial non-humans. I'm just gonna call you non-humans. It's easier. Um, don't know what to make of of these non-humans who have entered their town. <laughs> Um, I uh, yeah, keep going. I I'm just gonna say I stroke my luscious beard and slam my hand axe into the table, glaring at them. That's gonna cost you two silvers. That is, that's the beard, the bar, the, the, the barmaid. I just look, that, yeah. I just look at her and wink sensually. She hmm. rolls her eyes and turns back to serving ale. Yeah, yeah, she <laughs> wants it. She wants it. I know. Um, so Bowden brings out some plates of hot food and like, it's, it's nothing too good. It's, you know, some black bread and some fish and some, uh, some gravy and vegetables and stuff. None of it's really cooked all that well, but it's hot food. You guys can't deny that it tastes absolutely divine. Mm. Bowden says, yeah. um, I've got some warm wine in the cellar. You want me to bring it up for you? Oh, have you... do what nicely. Thank you. Have what you got that? any ale? Bowden, our gnome's short. What? Oh. <laughs> Fuck yeah, get the wine! <laughs> I'll bring everything we've got. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, Bowden comes back with, like, you know, just handfuls of uh, tankards and wine bottles. and Now we're talking! All different stuff. Um, Bowden, so... this is the sexiest thing I've seen in my life. I would, I would, I would ravish you right now if I could. All right, so as you, know, you guys start drinking and eating, um, we're going to have to probably end the episode pretty soon. But is there anything you guys wanted to say to finish off the night? You know, uh, I don't know. I, I, 
Are, are I... the patrons still uh, still looking at us? Yeah, they're, they're suspicious. Like, they're not, like, being aggressive. They're just really confused. Like, they've never seen a lot of... Like, some of them have obviously never seen dwarves and gnomes before and all that. Oh. Mm. I think I'd, uh, I think I'd just... Over over the meal, I'd like to uh, turn to Pinky and and say, based you know, based on his words earlier, ha have you lost many people in in your life, Pinky? You 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 seem to be experienced with losing losing loved ones and close ones. So I'm just curious. People, people come and go for Pinky. Um, it's all about Pinky. This is Pinky's uh whole philosophy. It's all about having purpose. If you have purpose to someone or to yourself, then you are good. And you can keep going. I well it's it seems that my my purpose is getting my team killed, so I uh, I I don't think I can say much more to that. Maybe stop being a dumbass and say that yeah. your purpose is to keep your team safe. That's what oh. you will do from now on. That's your hmm. purpose. Hmm. That's my ha purpose right now. <sighs> Harry strokes his beard and, and kind of zones out in thought. He just kind of disappears into his own head. Hey, right. Harry, and, you want to uh... watch this? <laughs> uh, uh, I'm going to use my message cantrip on, uh, <laughs> on one of the random barmates that are over there getting drunk. Yeah, oh, and I'm gonna no. send a message to him just saying, "Walnut thinks you're a pussy." <laughs> <laughs> Watch oh, this shit, Harry. <laughs> Harry watches with attentiveness. <sighs> do, you, do you need a roll for a cantrip? Um, I, uh, well, I think you do, don't you? <laughs> no, you didn't. Uh, well, for a cantrip, no, it's use. just like if I can, if I can. So what I, I mean, it's a very yeah. drunk guy, so um, I guess overall charisma. Hang on, are, are you are you saying this to Walnut or to one of the other patrons? No, saying you're saying it to, it to one, one of his mates. The patrons okay. with a message, <laughs> yeah, using a spell. Gotcha. Oh my god. I got an 18. Nice. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> over at uh, Walnut's table, who's the, the short guy who was vomiting all over himself, um, his friend kind of like suddenly looks up as if he's just been struck in the head and then smacks his tankard into Walnut's face. <laughs> <laughs> Walnut goes flying off his bar stool. Oh my god. <laughs> nice one, Pinky. Harry, 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 dance. Harry chuckles to himself and, and you know, raises his tankard to Pinky. Oh, nice one. Yeah, that definitely cheered, my, cheered me up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Look there at the go. measly peasants kill themselves. <laughs> Look, I, I, before we end it, I, I gotta ask, Lone Hunter, are you rich? Like, do you have money? Because you're calling everyone peasants. You're a peasant. It's you got not, nothing. I, I you have peasants. nothing. I call them peasants, not mainly based on their wealth, but on their strength. What? The Goliaths are people who, in order to survive, you must be the strongest. Well, that doesn't make much fucking sense in terms it of being called a peasant, but we'll buy it. Doesn't make any <laughs> sense whatsoever. You're fucking, you're fucking weird, mate. You, you're fucking weird. <laughs> Lone Hunter, I've got... Lone Hunter, I've got one question for you. Do you want to be the big or little spoon tonight? <laughs> Lone Hunter doesn't mind being little spoon. <laughs> Pink, Pink, Pink. Alrighty, matey, you can be the little spoon for tonight. <laughs> Pinky can Pinky sleep is in a my... hard, uh, big spoon. <laughs> Pinky can sleep in my barrel with me if he wants. Pinky can be the pillow. <laughs> so your barrel is big enough that you could sleep in it. Yeah, my well, I'm only I'm only four foot five, mate. I can climb inside the barrel. But that must be like pretty hard to like lug around. Well, it's only wood. It doesn't okay. contain much at the moment. It's only you know, wood. It's it's it's, <laughs> it's really it's, it's really it just well contains strapped. The emptiness of your past. <laughs> yeah, it just contains my past trauma. That's about it. It's pretty I'm well strapped on, to be honest. Right, yeah. So shortcomings. <laughs> <laughs> shortcomings. <laughs> the only issue is it probably smells a bit of like dog. Well, yeah, I'll probably leave it in the room when we leave. To be honest, you should probably wash it. <laughs> be honest. Yeah, Pinky. I'll wash it. Pinky sleeps upside down from the ceiling like a bat. <laughs> <laughs> um, so as you guys are like finishing off your food and drink, um, the barmaid, who the owner of the establishment, comes over and she extends a hand out to all of you and shakes it. Um, 
and she says, um, uh, she, yeah, that's right, I was just looking for her name. She says, uh, my name's Vera, by the way. You're when very she, beautiful, Vera. When she yeah. shakes my hand, I kind of turn it over and kiss her knuckles. She kind of hesitates and pulls her hand back. Mm. Boys, you need to step off it, alright? She's our patron, not a wench. Boy, look, I'm being, I'm being polite, mate. Oh, it's the only it's... way to treat. It's the only way to treat a lady. Vera starts laughing and she says, "What, what part of politeness do you think works in this sort of setting? What politeness doesn't get you anywhere around here?" I'll slap her in the face then. <laughs> uh... No, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. Before, before that happens, uh, Pinky uh, raises his glass to to Miss Vera. And she yeah. she grabs a tankard for herself and raises it. Yeah, I, yeah. Cheers. 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 Nice, Cheers. nice defusal. Clink. Good you, defusal. You guys and then make I a down clink. the entire thing. Oh, yeah. Right. Make a clink, guys. Clink. I did it. Right. I did clink. Clink. Okay, cool. <laughs> um. So she she takes a seat with you at the table, and she said, "Um. So you you never really told me what you what you folk are doing around here. No, not we don't get many visitors around uh, Devil's Creek." Well, uh, we've uh, me, we are measly travellers coming through the inn. Yeah, we've we've been travelling the last the last week or so. We've had no food, no shelter. We've just been moving from cave in a rock to fallen tree, just oh. over and over again. Sounds eating, horrid. Eating eating I... what little rations we have left. We've uh, we to pick up any work. That's given to yeah, us. yeah, any work, any work, work. available. We've uh, we've we've lost our teammate. We're demoralized. We just need we need a purpose. Did, did you say you're looking for work, mm, Miss Vera? Hey, Do you have anything that you need taken care of? Well, I wink. <laughs> or any one. <laughs> um, she leans in and says, um, "It just so happens that our town has, is in need of some uh, some good workers right now." Perhaps uh, on the morrow you should head to the guild hall and check out the jobs board. You'll uh, you'll see what I'm talking about. I sounds like a brilliant idea. And is she said, any, Sorry, "Is there yeah. anything that we can do for you?" Uh, yeah. not right now. Uh, no, no jobs on me right now. But uh, if you're if you're looking for work, <laughs> I'd uh, I check out the guild hall. I kind of. Slap Lone, Hunt, Lone Hunter in the side and whisper, knock it off to him. Are we hitting on her? Yes. Oh, I, sorry, I didn't <laughs> I pick do that believe up. that's what they're trying to do, yes. Sorry. <laughs> I didn't pick Vera that up. Vera wouldn't pick that up either. Yeah, okay. Vera I wouldn't have picked that up either. Yeah. Lone Hunters are pretty... Never mind, I think yeah. we should leave it that. Yeah, I think we should well, leave it there. Right, right as Vera stands up, she leans into Lone Hunter and says, um, if you keep this up, I'm going to have to get the, the captain of the town guard on you. He's my husband. He won't like you fooling around with me. Ooh. Oof. Harry just kind of chuckles into his drink. The captain has <laughs> good taste. She winks at you. Ooh, you got <laughs> oh a wink. Gosh. You um, got a wink. Pinky, pinky. pinky blushes. <laughs> All right, so I guess we'll just leave it there. Like the party kind of eats and drinks for the rest of the night. and. And um, we'll say, hey, are you guys wanting to go to sleep? Because like you know, it's nighttime yeah. by now, and it's raining. And yeah, yeah well, I think Harry, it's, uh, Harry doesn't awesome. really sleep at the moment, so he just kind of stands upright in his barrel, staring off. Just, into just space. wide-eyed, yeah, just <laughs> wide-eyed, wide staring we, off into space. The door, the door to our rooms has a lock on it, right? Yes. Yeah. All right, good. And Vera gave you the key for it. Yeah. Cool. Lone, lone hunter climbs onto the roof and sleeps on the roof. Like a gargoyle? And a crafting position. Just in the rain? No, really dramatically. I just essentially sleep on the roof. Okay, well, I'll let you okay. do that because your people are, you know, quite hardened physically, so I think you'd be able to do that. This is our shit, baby. This is yeah. our shit. <laughs> all right, cool. Are we all, we all happy with that? Yeah, I'm happy. I'm cool. good. I'm good to end it there. All right. Well, I didn't actually have anything prepared for the for the ending, so um, it fucked it. Uh, this is all you get. 